Let's uh, bring you more analysis. John Esposito joins us, Professor of International Affairs and Islamic Studies at Georgetown University. Thank you, sir, for being with us. Um, can you give us a, a kind of upsum as to who are ISIS-K? Well, basically, ISIS-K is part of, uh, as it were, uh, an extension of uh, the Islamic State. And, uh, in fact, what we see is that although the Islamic State has been um, limited in recent years in terms of its uh, major expansion in the Middle East and whatnot, it actually has continued to spread all the way over to Africa and all the way over to South and Southeast Asia. Um, they're, they're not welcomed by the Taliban. Um, their view, although they, they both point to the Islamic movements, is quite different. Uh, they see themselves as a caliphate, as an international movement, uh, and that they believe that they should be leading all Muslims and Taliban should be committed to the idea of um, the spread of, um, of this caliphate and it's taking back territories from, if you will, um, colonial powers. Uh, and, and they uh, look down upon the Taliban for not engaging in and, and accepting their kind of expansionism and their kind of uh, use of violence to do that. The Taliban, in contrast, are primarily, and this is the way they were 20 years ago and the way they are today, in a sense, they are primarily concerned about uh, their mission is to, uh, to create an Islamic state, as it were, an emirate, in Afghanistan. They're, they're not interested in expanding out of Afghanistan and joining any group uh, and, and moving in those directions. And as your reporters quite rightly said, um, while they may still be a, a tough movement domestically within the country at times, they also um, want to project internationally and, uh, and connect with the international community. And so the question is, how much will they accommodate as it were, some of the concerns of the international community. When it comes to the question of education of, of women, when it comes to the question of um, the, the use of, of violence against um, other Afghans. Indeed, it sounds like they're walking a tightrope of conflict there. But in terms of what happened today with ISIS-K, the fact that foreign soldiers were there and the Taliban saying uh, in the wake of the explosions that the presence of foreign soldiers was one of the provocations that led to this attack and the fact that people were there that want to escape Afghanistan, Afghan people who want to escape. Is that the kind of ideal double target then for ISIS-K? Exactly, exactly. I mean, what, what ISIS-K wants to do, they've shown it, is uh, to move against foreigners and particularly American and European foreigners um, in, in reaction to what happened a couple of years ago, and that is the extent to which these foreigners were were part of uh, a, a mission to uh, to move uh, uh, ISIS and and to minimize uh, their presence uh, in the Middle East, and at the same time they uh, can demonstrate uh, they will feel to um, to people in Afghanistan uh, a negative critique of the Taliban. Basically, say, look, they're not capable of really um, really. Uh, controlling the situation, uh, and, uh, and you know, they're, they're really not, if you will, a proper um, Islamic movement, meaning they're not like, they're not willing to be affiliated with, with the caliphate uh, uh, idea of ISIS and, and with, their, with their mission. They, they the Taliban, want, want to simply focus on their country and not get involved in fighting outside and killing other, uh, others. Um, and, and I think that this was a, you hate to put it this way, but this was an ideal target for them. So in, in, term, in terms of what this means, Professor Esposito, the Taliban taking power quickly in, 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 in a time scale that few had actually foreseen happening, that sort of brief 10-day period, and maybe united on that one aim, but there were always fears, analysts said, that this was a disparate group that would basically break up and perhaps have its, its different aims, its different ideas. Now there's another player in town, more extreme, more dangerous, leading to a more chaotic outcome. Yeah, and, and I, I don't think that that other player, I think that other player uh, will, will have uh, its, as it were, uh, its own success in its eyes. 
But I don't think that the other play plays to, to anything within Afghan uh, society. That is, within the, the, the let's say, those within Afghan society uh, who do not support the Taliban and who, uh, who uh, feel that they feel threatened by Taliban rule are not going to be people who are going to look to ISIS K because ISIS K is anything uh, has a history and an image of being incredibly intolerant towards towards others, um, towards Shia, for example. You have a, cons- uh, uh, you know, a, a considerable number of Shia um, in Afghanistan, and just recently in the celebration of Ashura, um, the Taliban, as it were, allowed for that celebration. They did not, they did not you know, uh, signal that they were going to move against, um, against the Shia or, or other Muslims who learn of their type of Muslim. So I think, you know, ISIS-K is playing its game, but, but I don't see it getting a, a, a lot of support uh, you know, drawing it from, 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 in general, from the Afghan population. They may get some followers, but I don't think they'll get significant numbers. In the short term, what does this mean for those people who are trying to get out, the people who are heading to the airport, to the borders, trying to get out? Well, I think... You know, one can certainly understand why many of them want to get out, because many of them have been, they're a a, a diverse group, but many of them have been associated with the Americans or with other foreigners who've uh, been there, uh, foreign troops or or just foreign NGOs, uh, and uh, and they they may see now, with the Taliban taking over, um, that that they can can well be, be, uh, be victimized by it. Uh, they think back to the early Taliban period, when for many certainly who were well-educated, uh, but, but not necessarily uh, practicing uh, or, or interested in practicing the kind of militant version um, of Islam that the Taliban have been standing for, uh, for them, uh, this is a dangerous time. And, and we do know that, that the Taliban have, while well, on the one hand, presenting an image of uh, being open to women, being educated in school, etc., as long as they dress properly. At the same time, they have been uh, moving against uh, former uh, military people um, and journalists and others. Um, so, you know, their record is not clear. And so I think anybody, anybody who's an alter- in an alternative position and wants to feel safe is going to want to get on a plane and get out of the country. Professor John Esposito of Georgetown University, specialist on Islamic affairs. Thank you, sir, very much for sharing your analysis with us here on France 24. We appreciate your time.